Hey, g'day. It's Matt Legg from AKB Science doing paper of the week instead of Steve-O because he's away and I found a cool paper, so I'm moving in on the action. Um, this is a cool paper because it's um, free, um, which means we can all access it any time, and I'll give you the link to access the paper. But it's actually the role of magnesium in vitamin D activation and function. It's an excellent paper because what it actually states is we were wrong the whole time that we thought vitamin D and calcium are the match made in heaven. It's actually magnesium is essential for vitamin D to work. Um, and that's the big clincher in this paper, not the calcium that everyone's been selling vitamin D with calcium as crucial, but it's actually magnesium. Um, this paper is published in March 2018, volume 118, number three, in the Journal of the American Osteopathic Association. The authors are Anne-Marie Uitons and her good mate Mahamas Razak, or we call him Raza, around the office just because, old mate, you know. <laughs> no, we never met him, but I'm promoting your paper, so, you know, don't be mean. Um, anyway, so the paper of the week, great paper for lots of reasons. Like I said, we always thought vitamin D and calcium must go together, but it's actually a magnesium deficiency will mean vitamin D can't work. So it's actually magnesium vitamin D that we really need to focus on uh, making sure we have adequate amounts of. The other good uh, thing about this paper is it gives a really good review over both magnesium and vitamin D. For example, it lists off all of the clinical signs and symptoms of magnesium deficiency. It lists off the foods that you can get your magnesium from. For example, uh, lists off the almonds, the bananas, the brown rice, um, those sort of things that are good sources of magnesium. But it does state that the studies show that our magnesium content in our foods compared back to the 1950s we're looking at 25 to 80% less magnesium. Makes it a little bit harder to predict how much we need um, based on the fact that our foods are not standardized to how much magnesium they contain. So seasonal variation will mean we may get deficiencies sometimes. It also talks about in the paper how um, blood, where the magnesium is found. For example, 60% of our magnesium in our body is incorporated into structure like bones and teeth and part of skeletal muscle. Um, it's only 0.3% of our total body magnesium is in our blood. And it's only in our blood while it's in, a, um, while it's in transit as it's being reabsorbed from the kidneys or absorbed from the intestinal tract from our foods or in transit as it goes to bones and muscle and nerves. So the actual amount of magnesium in our blood very rarely changes. We can have massive deficiencies in our skeletal muscle. We can have um, plenty in our bone, we can have deficiencies in the skeletal muscle, but the amount of magnesium in our blood may not change because it's just in transit. It's basically trying to take magnesium to a place or take it away. Um, not a true representation of your magnesium status. So. With uh, magnesium, very important for muscle, heart, teeth, bones, all the organs and all the cells. But importantly, it's uh, essential for the actual production of vitamin D. So we make vitamin D in our skin from UV light, radi <laughs> it's actually radiation damage on um, the UV light radiates our cholesterols and turns it into vitamin D. It's kind of a cool thing. Um, but that process is essential. Magnesium is an essential part of vitamin D production. But then all of the receptors and all the enzymes and everything that vitamin D needs to work are all magnesium dependent. So with a magnesium deficiency, your vitamin D cannot possibly work, even if you're supplementing mega doses to look after your immune system, inflammation, um, bones and teeth, you may still be getting the problems if you've got a magnesium deficiency. Um, uh, what was the main thing? Oh, that was the other thing. So when we then talk about vitamin D and calcium, and everyone talks about how important it is for calcium and vitamin D to work, the way the way they the reason why they talk about that is vitamin D inhibits these things called osteoclasts, and they carve up and shape the bone. So the theory was, if you do high doses of calcium, high doses of vitamin D, we're going to deposit lots of calcium into a bone, and the vitamin D is going to stop us from reabsorbing it. But um, the reality is, is you've got more fractures, more problems combining calcium and vitamin D than, if you, than without taking them, which is a scary fact. Um, so then what they realized, it's actually magnesium is the crucial factor. So make sure you're not magnesium deficiency uh, deficient, get plenty of um, sunshine, that sort of stuff. Have a look at this um, paper. It'll list off the foods you should eat and how much of each food you should eat. Then you can always supplement with a couple of hundred milligrams of magnesium on top from a supplement. Um, usually two to 300 milligrams from a supplement form plus the magnesium you're getting from diet will make sure you're not getting any uh, deficiencies. Then the sunlight along with your um, cholesterol will actually cover your vitamin D requirements. 
Otherwise, look for a good fat soluble or a good plant based natural vitamin D product, D2 or D3, and make sure you've got adequate magnesium. We'll show you how to find this paper, where to find it. Great resource for yourself and your clinic and your family. So, um, paper of the week. <laughs>